members, I'll start with my pronouns. I go by she, Aya, they, them. Probably the pronouns that are most feared here, apparently. So I hope you'll be able to sleep tonight. We are seeing this bill again in appropriations, where we would not normally see, the, see this bill because I assume the chair of the education committee refused to hear it. But maybe you do want a personal account from a legislator on this bill. The only legislator in the state of Arizona that identifies as non-binary. I'm actually the first non-binary Chicane legislator in the country. So this is personal for me. I shared my story last session because I was eventually able to come out how I saw fit. But for a long time, I had to hide who I was from so many spaces, not just school, from community, from family. And I'm so grateful that almost 20 years later, I'm able to have an amazing relationship with my family. And times have changed, but they have not changed for everyone. This bill is supposedly about parents' right and their rights. But we know this has been part of a political narrative across this country because this language is not unique because it's been introduced in Tennessee, Idaho, Iowa, Florida, in Congress last week. Educators should not be mandate, mandated to be put in the middle of family decisions. School is oftentimes a safe place for students because students tend to trust their teachers and educators. And vocalizing that a student wants to be called by a different pronoun is not cause for criminal concern. An educator should not be penalized because they are respecting a very simple request. And family rejection is a real problem, whether you like it or not. It should come as no surprise that students from this community are more likely to face bullying, violence, consider suicide, simply because of who they are. LGBTQ plus youth are twice as likely as their non-LGBTQ plus peers to say they have been excluded because they were different. When asked to describe the most important problem affecting their lives, nearly a quarter of LGBTQ plus youth named school and bullying problems second only, second only to non-accepting families. The issues are even more pronounced for transgender youth. In Oklahoma, because I would be remiss not to say their name, Next Benedict was a student who was assaulted in their school bathroom because of hateful ideas that have been passed and normalized by legislatures across the country. And I said it last year and I will say it again. One life is not pa worth passing this legislation. If you think that one life is, I would say to look at the ideologies that you maybe consider to be true and right. This bill indoctrinates students to hate. Are you scared that students who use different pronouns will grow up to be good members of this society? That they'll become teachers? Maybe they'll become social workers, attorneys, or even worse, maybe they'll become legislators. To our young people, I have to yet again assure you that this bill will be vetoed by your governor, Governor Hobbs, so you don't have to live in fear of this bill. Stop putting our kids in the middle of performative politics. They deserve better. And kids, if you see this, I hope you run for office one day. And I can't wait for the day that you do. Because I may be the first non-binary legislator to walk these halls, but I will not be the last. Because you cannot erase us, no matter how hard you try. It is clear to me that the priorities of Republicans is to continue its attack on the LGBTQ plus community and I vote nay 